Hey everybody, I'm going to show you how to make a fairy pond slash axolotl pocket pond. And what we are going to use is uh, basically any type of clay that you decide to use is probably going to be fine. I decided to use Sculpey because that's all that was at Walmart. And I rolled it into this little shape right here. And then I started to give it a dorsal fin, which uh, it doesn't look that good in this picture. Uh, eventually I smooth it out a little bit. And uh, I just go in with this little clay tool. I got it on uh, eBay. You can get them pretty cheap. Just go and look for the cheapest tools like this. And uh, pretty much you'll find a way to use them after a while. And once I smoothed all that out, then I rolled up a little eyeball for the little guy, and I stabbed it in. I used my finger to press it down, because that's the best way that I found that worked. And then I just shaped it up using this little tool. other one and went in again and did the same thing and this I'm not gonna lie this took a few tries because I kept making them the wrong size and one was bigger than the other or they were in the wrong place so don't feel discouraged just uh, rip his eyeball out and put another one in if you have to and there I go smoothing out everything again even though I'm gonna ruin it later on and then I just roll out a thin little snake right there to make the gills. And I usually try to make the first one the longest and then the second and third one are supposed to be smaller. And then I stick all of the three together. And I transplant that to the head. Like so. Then I repeat the process again um, for the other set of gills. And I find that rolling it out, it just creates a nice pointy tip. I just don't know how to get that unless I'm rolling it out like I showed you. And then the tedious work of my expert surgeon hands to put this uh, little headpiece on. And then I just kind of go back through and smooth out all of the little um, areas that are too lumpy. And I fix the gills to look a little bit more uniform and natural. Even though the look that I'm going for with this isn't a natural looking axolotl. It's supposed to be like a little cartoony toy. So you can always go realistic with it, but I just think that it looks a lot cuter as a toy. And then I'm going to go in with some little white specks um, just to brighten up the eyes and give it more of a cartoony um, cuteness look I guess you could call it um, and then I'm going to make the front arms by doing the snake again and then chopping it up and then adding little toes and whatnot um, using my tool and I found that this tool actually doesn't do the best job when it comes to um, making the legs I actually prefer to use like a little um, mini knife tool because that seems to do the job a lot better than this does. And I try to put it like right behind where the gills are attached because that's where it normally would be. And then I like to let them go forward. And then I made the other arm and put it onto the axolotl. And then I put the back legs on. Then you're going to want to go cook it in the oven. Sculpey is just like 15 minutes in the oven and then it's fine. But different clays will have different instructions. Just follow whatever it says. And then what I did is I mixed some red with some white to make a pink color. And uh, because this is going to be a leucistic axolotl, uh, they are white, but they're, they're a little pink because they're blood flow. So that's what I'm doing here is just to add some color to this axolotl because they're never actually white like they're supposedly called. 
I didn't bother painting the bottom of the axolotl because it's going to be sitting on the floor of the little mini tank pond, so no one's going to see the bottom of it. Oh, and then I went in with some blue on the gills just to give it like a darker look underneath of everything, so it looked kind of like a bluegill. And then I went in with some white on the eyes just to keep um, it looking a little bit newer because it did get a little bit dirty. And I also found that if you just take a marker, like a sharpie marker, it'll have the same effect. And you can just use that to do the dots if that's easier for you. I know not, not everyone has like a tiny little paintbrush like that. And there's the cutie pie right there. I think I did a pretty decent job. I'm giving myself a thumbs up like a dork. And this is the little uh, pond that I'm going to put him in. And as you can see, I already started the process of putting the sand in the bottom, and what I did was I mixed sand and epoxy resin, and then I poured it into the bottom, and then I just let it sit. The reason that you want the sand to be completely solid on the bottom is because if you don't, then when you pour the epoxy resin in, it will make the sand go everywhere and it'll look like horrendous um, and you don't have to use sand you can use different things like coarse gravel sand which makes it look like gravel on the bottom then you're going to mix the epoxy resin and pour it into the container and when you're mixing the epoxy resin you want to make sure that everything is like completely mixed together and you don't want to let there be any like air pockets because then that looks not as good And then here we go, this is the finished product. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I know I'm not the best at this, but you know what, you get what you get. I think it's cute, I think it's adorable, and I think that these are really cute for fairy gardens. Um, and I mean, obviously you'd want to make a smaller one for the fairy garden, depending on how big your fairy garden is. I know that different scales for fairy gardens, I don't know, you fairy garden people. For little kids, I think it looks so cute for them to have like an animal in a pocket. So if they want an axolotl or something like a fish, you can always just give them one of these and uh, it's a lot less maintenance. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Oh wait, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I need subscribers. Thank you. Thank you very much.